Welcome to Japan Seikatsu. I'm Ian, and I would like to speak to you today about making the transition from teaching English in Japan to your dream career. Let's get started. As background, I taught English for three years in Shikoku on the JET program. And like many of you, at the time, I was wondering, how do I change my career? What's, what's the next step for me? So I would like to share with you all today how I changed my career from teaching English to doing marketing and communications in the finance industry, which for me was, was my uh, dream career. Um, and I hope that there's some nuggets of wisdom within this story that can help each of you on your journey. So um, a little bit of background to get started here. I had had for a long time a passion or a dream to get to Japan. When I was studying abroad in Japan, I visited Tokyo and I met a, a friend of the family who worked in Tokyo, he was fluent in English, he was fluent in Japanese, and he was kind enough to take me out to coffee and talk to me a little bit about his career um, and life in Japan. And from that, I was 19 or 20 years old, I had a seed planted in my mind that one day I would love to work in a tall building somewhere in Tokyo. To me, it seemed like the future, just everything about the city. Um, and that that seed started to, um, to germinate and grow and would carry me eventually 10 years later to one day working in a tall building uh, in, in Tokyo. Um, so, uh, let, let me get started on my journey. As many of you know from watching the channel, I worked at IBM for three years before doing um, the, the JET program in Japan. Uh, even back then, my dream was I want to get to Japan, I want to be in that tall building. And so I tried through IBM to get a transfer to Japan. I was always looking um, on the internal internet to see what kind of opportunities were out there. Um, but it was quite difficult. I didn't speak uh, Japanese. I'd studied some Japanese, but I really wasn't um, at business level Japanese. And I was new. I, I you know, recently out of university, um, there wasn't a lot of demand from the Japan business, uh, from people outside of Japan. Uh, so it, it essentially just didn't work. I, I tried many angles, but it just, it just didn't work. There was no way for me to transfer from IBM internally uh, to Japan and that's part of the reason why I decided to apply to teach English in, in Japan. I applied to the JET program. I was placed in Tokushima in Shikoku where I had three wonderful years. Um, but during that time I still had my dream that I wanted to get to Tokyo and I wanted to be working in a tall building. It was almost a childish dream um, but it, it, it excited me and it motivated me. Um, so at that point I had this passion that wasn't fading and so I started to look at how do I get from where I am teaching English to a tall building in Tokyo working in finance. Um, well first of all geographically I'd already done a lot because I had gotten closer and I think that's important. I had gotten onto uh, the island of Japan. Um, now it was a shorter geographic distance to getting to Tokyo, okay? Um, and I think that's important. If you want to go somewhere, just get into the tent first and foremost. Um, if you are currently an accountant working at a, a an accounting firm and your passion is to work in um, media, one way for you to make that transition possible is become an accountant at a media firm. Now you're much closer. Now once you're inside that firm, it's possible to maybe move closer to production or marketing or you know the area that most interests you. But step one is always just get closer, get into the game, get into the area. If you're passionate about IT, about technology, maybe you move to uh, California or an area where there's an ecosystem of IT startups. 
Okay, so for me, um, getting to Japan, doing the JET program, teaching English was the first uh, step in that process. Next is to look at, okay, I have this vague vision that is motivating me. I'm not sure exactly what the job is. I'm not sure exactly what the company is, but I just know that I'm excited by this idea, by this dream. Now, uh, what is it that I'm missing? What is stopping me from making this jump? And very often you cannot do um, a jump directly to the dream job. It takes, it takes time and you need to build up the skills that you're currently missing. And this is where teaching English um, allows you the opportunity especially if um, if your passion is for something related to Japan to build up those skills so for me I realized if I'm gonna be working in Tokyo I need to have uh, Japanese language skills so on the JET program I was taking the JLPTs so my first year I took I think level four I failed level four and I decided I'm gonna just try extra extra hard in year two and I'm gonna go for level three and on that second year, I passed level three. And then I did the same thing. I said, I'm gonna work really, really hard. I'm gonna to try to get level two on that third year. And I, I took JLP level two in my third year. I didn't pass, I failed and I took it again and again. I failed multiple times. I can't remember how many times I failed, but I was eventually able to get it. So during that time while I was teaching English, I was building out a skill set that I would need to be able to have that dream job, which was Japanese. Um, the other things that I was doing at the time was um, looking to how can I get the skills that I'm missing. I was a history undergrad, a history major well, with a minor in Asian studies. So there was there was no finance. There was no statistics. There was no accounting. Um, that was a that was a big a big hole in my resume and one way to get that hole filled would be to get a master's degree an MBA so I started looking at uh, different MBA programs I found a wonderful program in Japan in Tokyo at Hitotsubashi Hitotsubashi ICS and the curriculum which I was able to look at by going online filled out a lot of the skills that I was missing so I realized that, okay, I would like to get an MBA. So what do I need? Well, I need money. I still had student loan debt from undergrad. Um, so I was, I was saving up money uh, to try to then be able to go to grad school. And I also needed to take the GMAT test. To get into grad school, to get into an MBA program, you need to have the GMAT. So... Um, I was uh, studying for the GMAT in my free time. It was not a fun process, but the idea of getting to Tokyo, of ultimately working in Tokyo, was motivating me to do some of the hard work, to make the sacrifices um, of studying for the GMAT to, to make that possible. Let me uh, take a quick look at my notes here. Yes, okay. so. Um, the other thing was I was expanding my network, trying to learn more. So using you know YouTube or um, uh, LinkedIn or reaching out to friends, um, ex-colleagues, etc., to try to build up my knowledge base of what else is it that I need to be able to get to this um, this goal, this vision that I have. When I had all of that, I then applied to the MBA program. I was luckily accepted. I studied at uh, Hitotsubashi for two years. And then I was able to apply to firms in Tokyo. I did an internship. And after the internship, I had an interview, which was th there was different rounds of interviews. But the final one was in Japanese to make sure that my Japanese level was high enough to be able to work at a Japanese company. Um, I was able to pass that because of the time I had spent teaching English on the JET program. And I found myself 
after a very long journey, that was three years at IBM. It was three years teaching English, and it was two years at grad school. So that's eight years it it took me to finally actualize that dream that I had, which was to work in a tall building, uh, to be um, bilingual, um, and to be able to work at a Japanese company. And it was a wonderful, wonderful feeling. Um, and still to this day, I, I work at, for that same Japanese company, and it's um, I feel very, very grateful. But the, the reason I speak about this today be, is because it's something that I believe anybody can replicate. It's really two phases. So phase one is exploring your interests to see what excites you. And that could be through workshops. It could be through uh, taking online classes. It could be, you know, playing by yourself if you'd like to build uh, programs, you know, doing some programming yourself and, and, and self-education. And then observing what areas um, are you meaningfully engaged and is it sustaining itself? So if an interest is year after year sustaining itself, that's a major hint that this is a direction you should move in. And once you identify that, then it's doing the analysis of, okay, I have my skills, but what am I missing? What, what do I need to build out? And how do I go about getting those skills and then taking steps in that direction? And I assure you, um, it'll never be clear. It'll never be perfectly clear. That's why you need to take micro steps in that direction. And one step after another, it will then become clear and clear. Um, so I will leave you with that. It's um, if, if you're currently teaching English and you have some inklings, the best thing to do is to get started. But having that end goal in mind is critical. If you're a ship and you're leaving port, you're leaving from London, you're going to New York, there's a very high chance that your ship will dock in the port of New York. But if you have no destination in mind, <laughs> your ship will end up wherever the current takes you. It's out of your control. In, you know, we all, in five years, you will be somewhere, but you want to be able to choose your destination. So, and again, this takes, this takes time. This isn't something that's going to happen overnight. This isn't a quick fix. Uh, there's a quote from Tony Robbins, essentially saying that most of us overestimate what we can do in one year. We come up with all these grand New Year's uh, resolutions, but we underestimate what we can do in 10 years. So start dreaming big because you can really accomplish a lot in 10 years and enjoy the journey. I enjoyed studying Japanese. I enjoyed saving even because I knew that it was going to be contributing to actualizing a dream. Um, it won't all be fun. I did not enjoy studying the GMAT, um, but I was, I was able to grind through it because of this uh, vision. So with that, I wish all of you the best of luck. Please, as always, if you appreciate this comment, um, this content, make sure that you like, make sure that you subscribe and share. I will be producing a lot more content like this uh, this year. Um, so please do uh, make comments in the comments section, ask questions, and I will be sure to uh, address them in either video content or I'll be responding to you. But this is all of our community. This is Japan Seikatsu, which is a community for people that are passionate about Japan and are on their journey to working uh, in Japan or connected to Japan. So with that, thank you for your time and take care.